begin by emphasizing this is not a new UNICEF strategy. Uh, UNICEF has always been uh, fundamentally concerned with issues of equity and the most disadvantaged children. Uh, but uh, as we thought about this uh, last spring uh, and looked at statistics, not only from UNICEF, but from Save the Children and many others, uh, the fact is that as the world has been making progress towards the MDGs, mostly by averaging national statistics, uh, we are discovering that in a lot of countries, and we'll show you this in more detail, while the nations might be making uh, some progress on under five child mortality, the, it's very uneven, and within nations and among nations, the gaps between the most disadvantaged and the most advantaged are growing. The question is, are the results of concentrating on these areas greater than any additional costs to get there? In other words, is it cost effective to work there? Because if it's cost effective, that means that we can, at a time of limited resources around the world, move more quickly towards the MDGs, which is a statistical goal, and save all of those children's lives, which is the real goal. Uh as, uh, uh, as Mr. Lake said, uh, one of the, f the startling findings, which many of us uh, in the room were also previously aware of, but actually we now have very clear indication that, in particular, if you look at the 16, uh, sorry, 24 countries which have made the most progress in reduction of under five mortality, 16 of them have actually done it with increasing disparities between the poorest and the richest. And in the majority of those countries, there's actually been a more than 10% widening of, uh, of inequalities in terms of child survival. We can show the same for nutritional status. We can show the same for um, access to critical services. So what we found is that we, we basically modeled two different strategies, something called a current strategy and an equity-focused one. And I'll go into details of what they consist of, but just to, to briefly summarize, the current uh, was the base, the current dominant equity strategies that we have, that countries have in their plans. And we assumed that they would implement those strategies, including, for example, getting rid of user fees, of scaling up training of health workers, of getting uh, more clinics built, more nurses and doctors and so forth. And you can see that if that gets implemented in the way which uh, plans of, uh, for countries have said, there will be a, a notable de uh, decrease in the five years that we modeled to 2015 in the yellow bars, both in the most deprived and least deprived areas by doing this. But what we're calling a more equity-focused approach will get you an even greater return, and it will accelerate further and give you um, uh, lower rates of mortality uh, in both the most deprived and even in the least deprived areas as well. In other words, if we put this in terms of the 15 countries that we model and you aggregate them, uh, having an even greater focus on equities uh, and, and focusing on, on populations uh, with the highest burdens uh, will actually accelerate progress uh, towards the MDGs. Not only that, but our analysis also found that uh, it's much more cost effective in, the, in, in all the settings. And it's, it's most cost effective in the poorest settings, in particular across Africa. So if you look at the top two graphics, with the additional million dollars invested in a more focused equity strategy, you will save up to 60, 70 percent more lives in the poorest countries because you get much better return uh, for those interventions and those ways of delivering. Uh, and I just want to emphasize uh, one of the uh, points on the uh, MBB analyses of looking at bottlenecks. Uh, as you notice, the supply side, uh, it, we're doing better uh, than the demand side. Uh, and just as I hope that this study helps us re adjust our thinking a little bit on the conventional wisdom that it's too expensive to do this, because it turns out to be more cost-effective to do it. Another is that uh, certainly for me, to the degree I've been a part of the development community, and certainly now, my conventional wisdom has been that aid is all about supply. Uh, more vaccines, more bed nets, more of this, uh, more of that. But what this shows, and it's a very important conclusion, is that we have to focus a lot more on the demand side of helping the poor have access to this, lowering fees, changing behaviors, and things as simple as hand washing or convincing mothers, if you provide waiting houses, for example, to go so that they can take advantage of clinics that are closer to it, uh, uh, to, to their villages, and uh, that 
<clears throat> it has implications for how we think about developing health systems. I would emphasize here, we are not calling for stopping what we're doing now in building healthcare systems. Uh, you will not find me going to some country and saying, tear down that hospital, Mr. Gorbachev. Uh, uh, but we are saying on all of this that as we go forward uh, in our marginal work uh, going forward for the next five years and beyond, uh, we need to put more resources into this uh, and less into the uh, traditional approaches.